here with Rebecca and Corey and we are having a conversation today about well we're actually gonna do a book review but before that I'm excited I have a question for you I'm very excited to hear your answers so if you were going to be a Disney princess <laughs> who would you be mm -hmm. and why mm -hmm. Yep. You want to start this one? <laughs> sure, I know. I feel like I, I know for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's no surprise because it's my favorite, my favorite Disney movie. Uh, I would, I would like to be Belle. I'd like to be Absolutely. Belle. I love I books. You essentially are. My dad's kind of crazy. Sorry, Dad, but you are. Um, <laughs> he, is. he is. He's got in a, the he, best way. He's got like in an the, invention, yes, in the best way. an invention ham radio room. He builds weird. He stuff. tinkers with things. He tinkers with stuff. Yeah, he's building stuff. Is, I mean, it's know? not quite the same as not Belle's quite father, the same. but it's it's yeah. Matt for sure. was slightly beastly before we got married. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't a weird curse, but I mean, he was slightly beastly. Slightly now hairy. He's, he, now he's more princely. You now live in a castle. Yeah, I can yeah. see that. <laughs> we'll call it a castle. It's cute. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I would say Belle. It's a good one. It suits mm. you. It is, it is a good one. It does suit you. <laughs> Okay, what about you? Okay, mine would probably be Princess Merida, and I really had to think about this. Mm -hmm, so that's right. from the movie Brave. Okay, so Corey helped me out here a little bit before, and <laughs> was telling me about I have an annoying little brother just like her, and I was yeah. like, Yeah, I do. Yeah, okay. I do. Yeah. <laughs> and Sorry, you've got red hair, and I know it's a defining feature. Mine's not super red, but it's red enough. It's, it's red. red. It's, it's in not the like big and curly like yeah. her. She has. The She's most amazing amazingly hair. large oh hair. It's gosh. amazing. It's, large. it's really impressive. Yeah. But so that would probably be mine. Archery. I'm kind of, yeah, I'm kind of like yep. an outdoorsy person to begin yep. with. Well, I taught yep. archery for a little while. There you briefly go. Briefly in my life. I won a shooting competition against my dad once. That there was we exciting. go. That's good. Right? There, you go. there you go. I got a prize for that. It was good. <laughs> anyway, that would probably be mine. I feel like I could relate to her. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Those, are, those are good choices. How yeah. about you? Okay, so for me, I, I completely had my princess in mind. And then, of course, you guys pointed out to me that because, for me, my favorite Disney characters are usually not the princesses. They're usually... <laughs> The villains. Mm -hmm. Again, not a surprise <laughs> no, from either I'm, of you. <laughs> I'm really torn. So if I was going to pick a Disney princess, I absolutely... Traditional Disney princess. A traditional, yeah. yes, a, from the animated movies, <laughs> <laughs> not the newer ones, um, I would probably pick Princess Jasmine because I love Stortious. that she lives mm -hmm. in a really warm climate. Yes. And yeah, she has a, a pet tiger. Yes. It's big. It's mm -hmm. big. I big love names. that. Yeah. yeah, I love that. It's and pretty sweet. And then you've got the magic carpet, yep. which no traffic. Mm -hmm. That sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. And then you have, no well, there's the genie. Genie. Which would be awesome. Pretty cool. Assuming that I'm Princess Jasmine before he's no longer genie. <laughs> Right, yes. yes. There's a timeline here there for when you want to be Princess Jasmine. Yeah. <laughs> right. Just the beginning. But yeah, I think definitely Princess Jasmine. There's a lot of That's qualities fair. there that, that would be fun. Specifically the tiger, though? Yeah. That's your main thing? Oh, yeah. Pet That's tiger? Nice. I am such That's a cat good. person, and the bigger the better. So, Didn't yeah. your grandfather have, like, a pet? He had a lion. He had a lion, yeah. yeah. He had a lion for a while. So until, cool. until it, like, reached adulthood, and then there's a certain time where you have to let them go into... Uh, preserve it's because kind of amazing. Yeah. Well, they're not really cool. safe pets no. unless you're in an animated what? film. <laughs> it's true. Well, and it's not really good for like a house. You know? No, they're not house so pets. So he raised a lion. I can't yeah. imagine nature. like preserve. knowing how destructive my dog is. I couldn't imagine if that was like lion sized. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh -huh. no, we have no house left. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> now we digress. <laughs> we okay. do. Okay. So. This week for On the Table, we decided to do a book review, which we yes, haven't done before, we but we're really excited. Um, so we chose uh, Letters from a Skeptic, A Son Wrestles with His Father's Questions About Christianity. And this is by Dr. Gregory Boyd and his father, Edward Boyd. And so I'll just give you a little bit of a brief background on, um, we'll start with the book. So this is a series of uh, letters written between Greg and his father, Ed, mm -hmm. over a, a period of time where Ed poses questions about Christianity and his faith, or his son's faith, to, uh, to him, and then he, Greg, responds. 
Right. So we're getting just, it's just Q&A. They're really... It's letters, back and forth. Just really correspondence. Nice. They're it short. They're very concise. Yes. Um, and by the end of the book, spoiler alert, but it says so on the back, so I feel like I can say it, Ed, Ed does come uh, mm. to faith. Um, now, Boyd, uh, sorry, Greg Boyd, is an internationally recognized theologian, preacher, teacher, apologist, and author. He received his PhD from Princeton Theological Seminary, his Master of Divinity from Yale Divinity School, and his BA in Philosophy from the University of Minnesota. He was a professor of theology for 16 years. Um, he is the co-founder of Woodland Hills Church in Minnesota, and he's authored or co-authored 22 books, uh, Letters from a Skeptic, um, Crucif Crucifixion of the Warrior God, and Cross Vision are some of his uh, best-selling and award-winning books. Hmm, so we picked cool. Letters from a Skeptic. Um, yeah, so let's dive in yeah, and review let's. it a little bit. So what did you guys like or dislike about the book? Let's start with likes. Yeah, let's first start with of the all, good I, stuff. I have to say I loved the format. I loved the correspondence format. Because yeah, it, sure. it, it was so easy to pick up and read a little bit and then be able to put down if you got mm -hmm. busy. Yep. Um, and. and it, and sometimes the the letters that um, Greg Boyd wrote back to his father were really dense. Yeah. So it was really yeah. nice that they were short, and then you can put it down and really think, think about, about it, it and yeah. debate in Take your, your own head. You know, yeah. how, and and I loved that concept of you know just that his father was so open in and and honest in answering his question. You really got to see that mm -hmm. um, it wasn't just an intellectual question; it yeah. was a personal question, and then yeah. it 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 made me think, oh man, how would I answer yeah. that question? Um, it, how would I answer that person in that, you know, because yeah. there's the intellectual answer right. and then there's the, the personal answer. The personal answer as well. Totally. So I loved that. Yeah, that was big for me too. And one of the other things I found is, and because of the style that it's written in, it really is sort of like a debate back and forth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it was just really well written that way, but I, I found it was so nice to see I guess the mutual respect they had for each other yes. yeah. while I was reading it. I was like, neither of them are defensive. Both of them are really open about these topics. Yeah. And I thought that was nice because especially in today's culture, I find that you you get offended by things so easily that you don't listen anymore. Mm. Yeah. And that's not obviously everybody. That's just like the norm of the culture. But I found that was one of the things that I thought that was cool because so many apologists are so concerned about being right rather yeah. than actually leading someone to Christ. Yeah. And I thought that was neat that he really wasn't his goal right from the beginning. And he told him right at the beginning is he's like, you're coming to come Christ. Yeah, yeah, he was very honest he about was it. He was like, yeah. this is my goal. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but he put it on the table and I, I yeah. appreciated how how honest they were in their in their letters, um, in how personal they mm, were. Like yeah. you get to know both of them, their, their, their life stories a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. What's going on with them as they're writing the letters? They didn't. They yeah. didn't take that out when and, they yeah. compiled yeah. the book, and, and I really liked that. Me too. And they didn't clean it up either. No. Like even some of the language, like there's some harsher language. It wasn't too bad, but no, it, they didn't it clean too that bad. up. But yeah, they didn't take that out. I'm glad they left that in there yeah. because you yeah. really see where he's coming from. Even mm -hmm. situations. The, the they use situ yeah. some situations of like horrible things that happen. Yeah. yeah. And they don't take that out. They don't yeah. try to soften any of that, which is I really, mm -hmm. I really did appreciate. it. I also really like how you could see you could really see how um, he was trying to answer his father personally where yeah. you yeah. know there were some issues that he could have chosen to get really technical with yeah but he didn't because he knew that ultimately wasn't what his father was actually asking yeah um, and so if you read it you'll see that too there'll be some questions where you're like wow that's a huge can of worms but um, Gregory may or may not go into it because right. of he, yeah. he's actually trying to think okay what is my dad actually intending to ask here trying to yeah. answer his dad's heart yeah. rather yeah. than just like the intellect of which it. Which is kind of the point it of is. us as it Christians. We're it supposed is. to be, when we're answering, answering questions from skeptics, we're meant to be reaching out to them personally because yes. the yes. idea is to be evangelizing. Yes. Yes. We're meant to win them to Christ, to go into all the world and make disciples. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really the accomplishment yeah. of this book. But it, what's interesting is how they do it. And I really appreciate it because I grew up in the church, I've grown up from the perspective of Christians. Mm. I don't mm -hmm. always understand the opposite opinion or way right. of thinking. Like I don't think oh, okay. like yeah. a skeptic yeah. on, naturally. So to hear Edward's questions from his own hand mm. was really helpful in understanding, yeah. okay, what is the perspective? Why yeah. do they ask it that way? And then to see the response was really helpful 
for me in understanding where mm -hmm. a skeptic may be coming from. Right. Because I don't naturally think that way. Right. I, because I've been right. in a relationship with Christ for so long. I that's my perspective. I mm. that's my worldview. Mm -hmm. Right. So I don't I don't think from the opposite side. So I appreciated that that side of it. Totally. For sure. That's neat. Yeah. Did you have a favorite letter or correspondence? Ooh. A favorite topic? That's um, good. One that you were when you read it, you were just like, yes. What made really, you think? I really enjoyed how he was talking about because I think it's so foundational. Um, he was talking. I, I, it, I believe it was um, in response to Ed Boyd asking, "Why would God make Satan at all?" Yeah. Right. Um, and then he launches. He kind of goes off into a different area, talking about how uh, we are the sum of our decisions, but in a, yes. in a different way. Yeah. And so I, I wrote down a, a quote. You know, he was talking about um, this. This lady um, who had something happen to her in her early life and so she chose to be bitter and angry and she chose to right. stay bitter and angry and eventually that bitterness seeped and saturated Destroyed her whole her. life. Yeah. Um, in his concluding statement about that story was what started as her decision to be bitter eventually became her nature. The more we choose something, the harder it is to choose otherwise until we're finally solidified, eternalized in our decision. The momentum of our character becomes unstoppable. We create our character with our decisions and our character in turn exercises more and more influence on the decisions we make. And, um, you know, I, 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 I thought he very elegantly described that. Um, and I, th I think he just articulated yeah. it very well. Extremely. I mean, we well. see really. that in the scriptures, like right before the flood, where you know you ask yourself, the Bible says um, that all the inclination of mankind's heart became evil continually. And, and you hear so many people go, but how? Like, how could that happen? But we do see that. I, I mean, you see it in everyday life. You see so how yeah. the decisions that you make eventually form they, your character. Yeah, that is who you become. They do. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that that perspective, that explanation, mm -hmm. I thought it was really, really well done. Yeah. yeah. For me, I think the entire book, like as I was, <laughs> honestly. That's not fair. No, I do have a specific piece, but as I was going through the whole book, there were so many questions that um, Edward Boyd, the dad, would ask that I was like, well, that's it. Like, Christianity's done. Like, that's such a good <laughs> question. You're going with it. I know. And I was, so, I, was so, I was like, I totally see your point, dude. Like, you're totally right. And then Gregory gets just come by with, like, this gentle little guiding hand. I'm like, oh, Christianity's fine, guys. We're good. <laughs> but, like, there were so many instances where I was like, it's such a big question. And, and some of these questions are questions that I have struggled with. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think for me, that would be my favorite one. He asked a question about why does God need, uh, why does an all powerful God need prayer? And I right. thought for me, I was like, you know what? That's interesting because as much as I think uh, also growing up in the church, it's become such a habit. Like you, you learn from super young to pray to God. And, yeah. and I think it just was nice to take a step back and see from someone else's perspective, yeah. why would an all-powerful God need prayer? And mm -hmm. I thought I thought he did a really good job of, They're important of things answering to think those about. questions. Yeah. yeah. So there mm -hmm. was a lot of those that I thought was interesting. And, and one of the quotes at the very end of the book that I thought just kind of summed it up really well for me was, it's a, actually a quote from Edward Boyd, and he says, you give the best reasons imaginable for believing the most unimaginable things. Mm -hmm. And I thought this sums up that book in one quote for me because yeah. it was so true. There's such simple answers, and he really dumbs it down in a good way. Mm, yeah. And he just made it so simple to understand the most complicated things that most people struggling with Christianity would have. And he talks about at the beginning of the book too, how um, whatever your faith is, it's good to have it challenged. And I thought Absolutely. that was like a nice perspective going into. And yes. so when I was reading it, I was like, you know, I really want to read this from the dad's perspective and challenge it and see if I could answer these questions. And some of them, honestly, I don't think I would have answered close <laughs> to, to articulating some of the answers for these. So this is definitely a, a book I'd be rereading so for times sure. yeah. because there's so much in it. I honestly think it would make a really cool Bible study For tool. sure. Yeah. For and sure. They take, yeah. And speaking of, they, they do have yeah. um, questions at the back that go with each correspondence mm -hmm. that you can go through and answer. I didn't as I was reading along, to be fair, but um, you can you can do that yeah. and, and turn it into a, a mm -hmm. good study. I think it would make a really cool book, Christian sure. book club. Oh, like, yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Because you get both perspectives. You get yeah. to actually yeah. challenge your thinking. Because Big time. Tru truthfully, there are some things that, that he, with answers that I, I thought, yes, I completely agree. That makes yes. perfect sense. That's amazing. And then there were some where... I was like, I don't know. I'm challenged here, and then I would, and then I put the book down and go away from it and mm -hmm. consider, like that's not what I 
traditionally have believed or yeah. I don't know if I agree, so now I'm going to question it. And it, it challenged me to, to grow and to think about my faith just a little bit more, which was... Yeah. Really, good. actually exciting. Yeah, yeah. that's so, a really good thing. I and really we are enjoyed called it. to be able to give a defense for our faith. And I thought Absolutely. this book is like, yes, you're yeah. doing it. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> so it was good. Yeah, definitely recommend. Yeah, that's definitely. Good. I really appreciated um, number 28, how can I be holy and sinful at the same time? Mm. I, I appreciated mm. his, his take on that, his, the way he explained it. I haven't heard that explanation quite so eloquently before. Mm. And I really, I really enjoyed, enjoyed that one. There were a lot of good topics in there that I hadn't even thought of before. That would be one of those questions. It's a good example. Yeah. I hadn't even thought of that. I was yeah. like, oh, how, how can you? Like, how <laughs> you? like for real. <laughs> so it was interesting for me. It was eye-opening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Was there anything that you maybe didn't quite agree with or that you, you're you kind of like, I don't know, that really challenged you? Yeah. There was a couple things for me, two things specifically, that I was kind of like, one I hadn't even heard of. And then the other one I had heard of, but so briefly that I was like, uh, is there even any biblical evidence to back this up? And then there was, and a lot, like like quite a bit. But there was two things. So one is he, he talks about um, open theism a little bit, which is the idea that right. um, because God loves us and he desires that we freely choose to reciprocate his love, he's made his knowledge of and plans for the future conditional upon our actions. So even though he knows everything, he doesn't know what we're freely going to do in the future. Mm, so that right. was one when he was explaining that. I hadn't really heard of that before. Yeah. And I was like, that's an interesting concept. It's I very don't know that I agree with it, but it was interesting But it's for me. probable, isn't it? Like it, when you read through it, you're like, wait, probable? Huh. I, I think anyway. I mean, yeah. I mean... <sighs> This concept of if God knows the future, then how do we have free will? This this free will issue is a big deal, and it's been a big deal yeah. in the church for forever. Arminianism, yeah. like, Calvinism, since there it's was like a the church, biggest this debate. has been a big yeah. deal. So, I, I mean, <coughs> yeah, it's good to know what you think about it, and yeah. it's good to yeah. be educated on the different stances of it. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I... I would be skeptical into the fact that it can be solved 100% yeah. on this I, side. And this might life. just be one of the <laughs> yeah, mysteries we never know. Because I know one of the first verses that came in my mind when I was talking about, or when I was reading through this, I was like, wait a minute, hold on, does this work? Was a verse in um, Psalm 139 where it talks about, Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. Mm -hmm. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. So for me, in my mind, I was like, does that work with this concept that God mm -hmm. doesn't know all of these? Because it says right there, like, it's written in there. But then again, that's also poetry. So it's tough it's to take your poetry theology and, from that. And it's also mm -hmm. David. Yes. Right? And David yes. is a foreshadowing of the Messiah. So yeah. is it just mm -hmm. spe special cases? Like, we just don't know how it works. Totally. totally. There was one section that I was reading, and I, I underlined it. And I, it was just one of those ones where the, the portion where I read it, and I thought, <coughs> I don't know. And it was one of those, like, I, I stopped, and I was, like, kind of chewing on it. And I kept reading, and I would go back. And it was just like, I don't know. I hadn't, I hadn't thought about it. And so this is the, uh, in response to, is your God all-powerful? And he says, I'll just read it for you. Is my God all-powerful? I want to answer yes and no. Let me explain myself. It is my view, which I believe to be biblical, that God is all-powerful in the sense that God originally possessed all power before creation. God was the only one, only being who existed and thus had all the power there was. He could do anything and nothing opposed him. But with the creation of free creatures, I maintain God necessarily surrendered a degree of his power. Or perhaps it is better to say God delegated some of his power. Our freedom is a little piece of controlling power lent us by God. In order to allow creatures to be free, then God voluntarily gives us a portion of his power and thereby surrenders his opportunity to always get his way. I don't think it could be any other way for freedom must entail that free that the free person can decide his own way and it may not agree with God's way. Mm -hmm. So well said. I agree with that. Like completely. It makes sense, but... Oh man. It's, when it's, I, it's when you, it's because I think a lot of times we're, we're programmed to think like keywords. There's like those buzzwords, yeah. like God yeah. is all powerful, yeah. Yeah. And but then, then controls everything. everything. But then knows we normally everything. don't break that down and unpack it. But when yeah. you take the time to unpack it, okay, what does that mean? How can yeah. we have free will and God still be all powerful? So yeah, he's unpacking free. it. Yeah. yeah. And I think, yeah. He, I think he did a really good job, but man, when I was reading it, I was just like, I'm on the edge of my seat going, I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And that's good. But it was good. And I, and I think by the end of the, the, 
that chapter, I, I was fairly convinced that he made a very good argument in the least, and I think I probably do agree he, with it. He's but definitely made a really good argument for it. It's yeah. definitely one you want to read in full. For, for sure. For sure. For it's sure. so for sure. good. Yeah. And I think we he need does to... explain it further than that, of he course. Does. Oh, but totally. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I think it's important too to like because I um, before I got the book I was reading some of the Amazon reviews and right. I wasn't reading any of like the, right. the like super negative I just read a couple ones from from Christians who were really right. angry because of things like that right. like really angry and writing terrible reviews like this guy's a heretic or he or he believes heresy don't get this book and I, and and. Uh, I just wanted to just be like, okay, everyone, breathe in, breathe out, because, <laughs> because there are, I mean, there are, there, salvation is what we know. We know salvation in the scripture, yep, and there absolutely. are, but then there are, there, there are other issues that we don't know everything, because the Bible doesn't, it doesn't fully, reveal it. it doesn't fully, fully explain, explain it all, explain everything, and, and, and there's some things that it just assumes you know, like this whole God power, God's power thing, you know, and, and, um, the, the point of the entire book that that they wrote together was not believe every single thing that Greg Boyd believes. That yeah, wasn't totally. the point and of the book. And he puts yeah. that out a few he times. Says he that. says, this is my opinion. And yeah. He says, he's like, this isn't what most people yeah. even yeah, believe. Yeah, he'll say He that. points out where I was he like, breaks tradition. I never heard of it. It's so <laughs> interesting. It's, it's refreshing. Really interesting. Yeah. It's nice because, again, he's he he's being really open and he's being really honest about like what the core of Christianity is versus mm -hmm. what the peripherals of Christianity are and yeah. where there are differences in theology, and that's okay. They I think a lot of yeah. times um, the temptation in today's world is to polarize ourselves. You become one yeah. thing or the other. You're a fundamentalist or you're an evangelical or you're reformed or you're, and it's like, okay, yeah. everyone take a big breath. Yeah. And do you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God? Have you confessed him yeah. as Lord of your yeah. life? And then everything else is and kind of the there. details. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the details, the details are important. Yeah. They're totally important. But they're not life or death, and they're nothing to be calling someone necessarily a heretic over. It and I think on. lately I'm noticing that word getting tossed around more and more, a and lot. it's 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 a little bit uncalled for, because you really don't we don't know everything. Yeah. And not every belief that disagrees with your belief is heresy. There are mm -hmm. some differences uh, in in theological perspective that are still within the realm of Christianity that are mm. not breaking rules that are not taking any scripture, you know, and, and committing heresy. So we got to be really careful when we start throwing that around and yeah. saying, oh, you don't believe what I believe, you're a heretic. Mm -hmm. Right. Break it down. And that's that's one, one aspect of this book that I would challenge people who want to read it. Read it. You may not agree with yeah, everything, that's totally but fine. that's okay. Good. That's yeah. probably yeah. a good thing to challenge what you believe, to think it through, because it's, and that's one of the things that I've been working on the last year and a half is, okay, why do I believe what I've been taught forever? Mm -hmm. I want to know why for myself. So let's mm. go back and like, and just almost study everything from the beginning yeah. yes. because I've traditionally been taught certain mm -hmm. things, but I don't know but why. why. Mm -hmm. yeah. But why? So let's just break them all down and, and open it up. And so in that, in that respect, I really appreciated yeah. this, this book because, yeah. and you get to see both, both sides of the argument. Yeah. Um, I obviously, as a Christian, do believe that Greg had a much stronger argument, and yeah. obviously Ed eventually agreed too. Yes. Um, but and I, I really appreciated that yeah. that aspect. And mm -hmm. I definitely appreciated that he kept that message of salvation through the whole book. He didn't yeah. deviate from that, even though yeah. he talks about some seriously core denominational differences. Yes, issues. he does. He yeah. wasn't. That wasn't the focus of it. No, He's he not, was trying to answer the questions. Absolutely. While he and maintaining his goal, which he mentioned absolutely. several times, like he'll, you know. Ed will ask a question and you can see that he's kind of softening on certain things. And that was interesting yeah. to see. You could see his heart soften mm -hmm. in some of the letters. And, and Greg would get excited about that and just write it out like you're you're coming, you're closer. I yeah. can see it. And he's just he's not hiding <laughs> it at all. No chance. Really. <laughs> Pretty much. It was good though. It, yeah. In that, yeah. yeah, I really appreciated that. Mm -hmm. And one of the other things, a quote, just in regards to that, he does say in there, he's like, now I can't worry about the Spirit's job. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. Um, to convict your heart, I'm not the Holy Spirit, right. but I sure can concern myself with convincing your mind. And I thought that he, he did really good at that. Mm -hmm. He yeah. did a good job presenting his faith well. Yeah, yeah we need so, to have answers for totally. why we believe, and we need to be able to give them to people who have questions. And that's case in point with this with this yeah. book. It's really, it was really interesting. I really enjoyed that part yeah. of it. So, Was there anything for you that you, that you had disagreed with other than the... Uh, 
open theism piece or that you that jarred you maybe maybe not disagreed with but at first I think I did at first mm -hmm. at first I was like whoa you know what it no. sounds off <laughs> it's, it's, I'm like no God God is all powerful what are you saying what are you yeah. saying but then as he explained it I thought you know what I think I think that I think I agree with that I mm. so I'm not I'm not decided on everything that he said there were a few chapters where I was like huh <laughs> I'm just going to put this down and read my Bible for a bit because yep. yeah. I, I, I definitely I have questions. But, yeah. but I, I know I, I think that was probably just the, the open theism was the first mm. one where I was just like, yeah. hmm. And that, like, it's so good to be challenged because now if you want to keep looking into that issue, now you know. Now yeah. you know about the issue and you can yeah. go and you can get other resources and, and think it through. Yeah, Absolutely. because study it. before this book I had no idea about yeah. that, that perspective. I didn't even know that yeah. was a perspective. Yeah. 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 So I really did appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So anything else to add about our book review, our first book review? No. I think that was about it. He did bring up um, another interesting view on health that I had only heard right. once. Oh, yeah. Yes. And that to me was really interesting. So basically what he believes is he believes that um, hell is not eternal. So he believes that you go to hell for a time. And I guess once he, he mentioned something about hopelessness. And he, he mentions right. about like once that's achieved, God basically snuffs you out. So that to me, again, I had briefly heard about it right. um, from some things going on at Quick Study, but I hadn't looked into it really well. And I thought he gave a really cool explanation for it. And I know mm. like he firmly believes this. I thought it was interesting though. Mm -hmm. So that was another one where I was like, huh. And yeah. he, that's kind of like, that's, it, it, it has become, I don't think it should be, but it has become kind of a taboo topic in the yes. church. Like you don't, yes. you, you like, you yep. should just agree with like what you've been received as tradition and just kind yes. of let it go. Yeah, go everyone's just but when you start to actually look into the, the history of this hell issue, mm -hmm. it, it was on the table, you know, for theologians for quite a while until it was, de it was determined as tradition yeah. in the 15 or 1600s. And it should still be today. In fact, totally. we are going to be doing a topic or doing the topic of hell. Mm -hmm. Later Eventually. this year, yeah. yes. and there's it's some the really <laughs> cool books that you can get that that have they'll have like a representation from each view, and then they yeah, kind of right. debate it, and those are extremely helpful. But it's Very really cool. interesting to dig into that issue because again, it absolutely touches on the nature of hell. Will necessarily touch on the nature of the God who made exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. at the same time, it 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 you know it's not a salvation issue as 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 long as you are willing to accept a one of the biblical views of hell. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so. there's there's like a couple options here, I guess, that you can there have. There are options. Yeah. But, but this was an option that I hadn't heard yeah. presented. Yeah. Um, everyone agrees that completely. there is a hell. Yes. Yeah. Not everyone yeah. agrees on what it's like, yeah. what it's like, how long you're going to be there for, yeah. if and you can for, get out or not. For me, even the way that he presented it, I was like, if I do believe what he is saying, it changes my view of God a lot, like drastically. Yeah. Like it changes what I view his character as. Yeah. And for me, it affects everything. that was interesting. So yeah. again, something I still need to look into a little bit more and, and like kind of do a little bit more Bible research on mm -hmm. because because you do have certain things ingrained yeah. in you that you do believe one way or the other. Yeah. So for me, it was another one of those moments where I was just kind of like, oh, like that's interesting. Yeah. I like that. It was cool. So having read that good. chapter on hell, I had just done a little bit more of a study on that topic. So I kind of have a right. little bit more of a of where I think I fall and the which version I, right. I believe what what on on that teaching, and you had just done a DVD. Um, mm, on, yes. I think it was a quick study unplugged. Yeah. Um, where you, your brother, and your parents sat down around this very table and discussed hell mm -hmm. and its different. Um, yeah. And I got to represent the non-traditional view, which was so fun. <laughs> and that's actually the first time I had heard it. Okay. When you yeah. guys had brought yeah. that up, yeah. I was I was like, heresy. And then I was like, it's not. <laughs> deep like, breath, deep breath. Like, exactly. like, it's not heresy. It's those now. triggers, though. Yeah. We, we all have triggers. Totally. Yeah. 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 So, and, and, and again, that was the first time that I'd heard it. So then when I was reading this, and he sort of had a similar view as to one of the ones that you guys had presented, I was like, all right. It's interesting. So, yeah. It's cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think Very that's good. all I've got on this. Yeah, so yeah. overall good, recommend, right? Absolutely. I recommend this. Oh, for Absolutely. sure. Like, the reason my book's not here is because someone's borrowing it already. <laughs> That's why it's not with me, because yeah. I've already lent it out, because it was that good. Yeah. That I was like, here, you need to read this, like, now. Yeah. Yeah. It's so good. So, yeah. it's neat. Awesome. So, thank you for joining us on the table. I hope you enjoyed our book review. We will probably be doing a few more in the very near future. Mm -hmm. And join us next time. Thank you for joining the discussion we've thrown on the table today. We hope you enjoyed this episode. 
If so, you can give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest content from Bible Discovery TV. You can also find On the Table on Facebook with our latest episodes and some bonus content. Thank you.